risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Good morning and welcome to St. Andrew Lutheran. I am Pastor Jenna Bukowski, the pastor here at St. Andrews. And on behalf of our congregation, it is wonderful to see so many of you. I know we have many visiting family members. It is an honor to have you with us this morning. You all are sitting here and you're thinking, man, it smells so good in here. What kind of fragrance is going on? It's our Easter breakfast. Our confirmation youth are downstairs cooking up a wonderful meal. It's one of their fundraisers. And we hope that you will be able to join us, even if you didn't pre-purchase tickets. We'll have plenty of food, and we'd love to have you. Um, just a note to folks who may, um, tomorrow the office is closed. If there are any emergencies, please contact me. My contact information is in the midweek class. Um, and other than that, we are so happy to have you all with us this morning. And with that, we will continue with our call to worship uh, shared with us this morning by our choir. Quench our thirst 
and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's need through this living water, where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment, where despair prevails, grant hope, where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns forever. Amen. Amen. We remain standing as we sing our opening hymn at number 365, Jesus Christ is Risen Today.
start with something a little sad. And that is, we remember today on Easter Sunday, everybody's happy on Easter Sunday, right? But the reason we're happy is that first, there was sad. And the sad thing that happened is that Jesus died. He died a horrible, horrible death. And the Bible says that he died and he breathed his last. That means he stopped breathing and he was dead. There wasn't anything left of him except his body. That's pretty sad, isn't it? Now today, when someone dies, I don't know if you've ever known anyone who died, but today, when someone dies, we bury their body, their body that's not breathing anymore, right? We take them to a cemetery. But when Jesus died, they put him in a cave, put his body in a cave. It was like a rock. And they put a big stone over the opening so no animals could get in or anything. They closed it up, and that was that. Jesus' dead body was in a cave. He wasn't breathing. He was dead. And I have something here I'm going to show you. I made these rolls last night. And this roll is kind of like the cave that Jesus was in. You see it? There's no opening, is there? No way to get in. There's no way to get out. And so that's the sad part, isn't it? To think about Jesus' body in a cave, all closed up. But, there's always a but with God. But three days later, some friends of Jesus came to the cave. They came to this tomb. They wanted to remember Jesus. They were still sad. Jesus was still dead. They wanted to remember him, so they came to this cave, all sealed up, and they found Look at that. What's in there? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing is in here. And when those ladies, when those ladies came to the tomb, that stone that had sealed it up was moved and the tomb was empty. There was no body in there anymore. There was no Jesus in there anymore. It was, it was gone. And the angel, there was an angel there too that talked to them. And the angel said, there's no body. Jesus' body is not here. And then they said, Jesus is alive. Now that doesn't happen. Dead bodies, bodies that have stopped breathing and have been in a cave, they don't come to life again. How can a person be alive after they were dead and breathed their last? It's a mystery, but it's true. It's true. It really happened to Jesus. Jesus showed us that when we die, the same thing will happen to us. We don't have to stay dead when we die. Jesus will give us a new life. That's pretty amazing. Now, there also might be other times in our life when there's death or you feel kind of dead inside or there's no hope or you think, oh, it's over. I want you to remember this tomb that Jesus was in and how everybody thought it was over. Jesus is always hope and always brings new life. That's the good news of Easter. That's why everybody gets dressed up and comes to church and sings loud, happy music and why we say to each other, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. 
Do you know how to do that? When the pastor says, Christ is risen, you all can say, he is risen indeed. Should we try that? I'm going to say, Christ is risen, and you can say, he is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And then we all get to say, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, well, that's great. Okay, you guys, I have more rolls in my basket, and I would like to share them with you if I could. There's cinnamon in these rolls, so I don't know if you like cinnamon, but if you do, I'll give you one. And when I give you your roll, I'm going to say, Christ is risen. And you can say, he is risen indeed. How about that? Like that? Now I'm going to have to break these up because I didn't make enough rolls for everybody. We've got lots of people here. So I'm going to put my microphone down and share some empty two rolls. And remember, there's always hope, and there's always life with Jesus, okay? We are going to say a prayer, okay? So in your prayer positions with your empty two rolls, and let's pray a happy prayer. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, thank you for dying and rising again. Thank you for dying and rising again. Thank you for the new life you bring. Thank you for the new life you bring. Thank you for the hope you bring. Help us to share your story with others. Help us to share your story with others. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen. Put him to death by hanging him on a tree. 
but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will sing selective verses of Psalm 118 responsively.
and suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead man. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he had been raised as he said. Come to the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, greetings. And they said they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshipped him. And Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. <laughs> Beloved of God, grace and peace to you in the name of the risen Christ. Alleluia. Good morning. It is a good morning, isn't it? Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. There we go. That first day of the week after the Sabbath was a good morning. It was a glorious morning. It began pretty early, before dawn, that time of day which is unlike any other. Now, if I'm being honest, not usually up to see that time of day, but, but, on those rare occasions where I am awake that early, I marvel at the near stillness of it all. Right? The world waiting to take its first breath of the day, waking up and stretching into that morning space. Often we'll hear birds twittering in the trees as the darkness slowly and then suddenly turns into daylight. This is how I picture that day when the women went to the tomb. Waking up before dawn, maybe breaking their fast, but quickly making their way to where the body of their Lord had been laid. They were anxious to get there. Did they know what to expect? Did they really know he wasn't going to be there? He had said a bunch of things, but did they trust? Now in Matthew's gospel, they don't have any of the burial spices with him for them. They arrive empty-handed just as the sun hits the horizon, and Jesus had been buried without being prepared. They had not had time to do it before it had to be buried. And before the Sabbath had started, which on the Sabbath, you can't do work. And so they go to the tomb, and they go empty-handed. These women have been with Jesus since the beginning. Matthew describes them as having provided for Jesus. They are as closely connected with him as the 12 apostles. Just as Jesus has shared his teachings, explained the parables, demonstrated his powers, deeds of power to the 12, and he's shown them all the ways that he is fulfilling the messianic prophecy, these women have been at the front line of it all. They have seen everything. They were at the foot of the cross as he hung there, dying, as he was laid in the tomb. And now they are waiting, anticipating what will happen next. And they are empty-handed. Jesus said he would rise from the dead. 
And when God, that earth shaker, unseals the tomb, it's these same women who show they have more courage than the Roman soldiers standing guard who become so still as to seem like dead men. The women who have been there since the beginning of Jesus' earthly journey are the first to witness his glorious return to the land of the living. He is the Messiah, the anointed one. Such simple words that hold the whole universe of truth. We proclaim Jesus as our Savior, our Lord, the Son of God. And in that confession of faith, God has invited us into the mystery of faith that is being a Christian. In following Jesus, we are witness to the one who took on human flesh, who took on life as we know it. Just think about your life. Jesus lived a life. We pay witness to the one who went to the cross and the tomb, and in doing so, wholly, completely conquered death's rule on earth. It defies all logic proclaiming Christ crucified and Christ resurrected. And yet, like the women on that first day at the tomb, we have shown up without our burial spices. We don't accept to find Jesus in that tomb, do we? We don't come to church on Easter Sunday expecting to find Jesus still in the tomb. And when the angel appears to tell us, do not be afraid, we have the audacity to listen. <clears throat> Instead of being afraid, we look into the tomb with awe and wonder and hope because we want what Jesus has said to be true. We want him to be our Messiah. We want to believe that death has been destroyed, that God's power and reign are absolute, and so we want that tomb to be empty. And that tomb, it is empty. Jesus arose from the dead. He had died. The Passion narrative we read on Good Friday and last Sunday during the Palm of Passion reading, it makes that clear. Mrs. Sonia did a wonderful job of reminding us of what we went through to get to this morning. Jesus gave up his breath and died, and death could not contain him. The power of death is no match to the power and might of the creator of all that is. God's love, mercy, and grace cannot be contained in a rock-hewn tomb. Jesus was not there that day. He is not in the tomb this day, and he will never be in the tomb again. Today we sing out in joy and thanksgiving and praise to God Almighty that through Jesus we have been given everlasting life. All the promises that Jesus made have been kept he has shown us again and again that we can trust him, that we can believe him when he says that death cannot contain him and that death cannot contain us. So that tomb, that tomb is empty because Jesus, who is the Christ, lives. And because he lives and because he keeps his promises, we can trust that we too will live. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> I invite you to please turn to hymn number 367 and to please rise as you are able for our hymn of the day.
Let us confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's Son, Sovereign, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and then he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You call your church to witness to your salvation. We give thanks for all theologians, preachers, and teachers who proclaim your gospel. Equip all the baptized to share the joy of the resurrection in all we say and do. Risen Lord, in your mercy, you bring abundant life throughout creation. The green blade rises and all creation greets the resurrection dawn. Preserve vineyards and orchards and those who tend to them. Feed us with the fruits of creation. Risen Lord, in your mercy, you show your steadfast love without regard to borders, barriers, or human-made divisions. Infuse your justice in every nation of the world so that all experience the peace that only you can give. Risen Lord, in your mercy. You anointed, anointed your Son with the Holy Spirit and with power. Encourage us by his example in our ministries of healing, care, and outreach. We pray for all who are sick or hospitalized. We lift up today, Amy, and for all healthcare workers who care for them. Risen Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have put gladness in our hearts. Inspire musicians and dancers to rejoice with songs of victory. Bless the music ministries of this congregation and all who foster our assembly song. Risen Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As you have raised Jesus from the dead, you show us your resurrection promise. With your holy ones who have sung your praise, free us from fear and empower us to go and tell the good news. Risen Lord, in your mercy, Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of that peace with one another.
Dear ones, come and receive Jesus, our strength in the wilderness. I invite you to please be seated. Just a couple of notes on our community this morning. First of all, we practice an open table here, so anyone who would like to receive communion is welcome to do so. If you or anyone in your household is not doing that, but would like to receive a blessing, I invite you to come forward with your arms crossed, the real quick signal for me to know to offer a blessing instead. And today we will have two um, two lines to come up and receive communion. So please just follow our ushers, Jack and Debbie. They'll help you to know what to do and where to go. The table is set. All is ready. All are welcome.
to all those who are worshiping with us from home, this is the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. Amen. I invite you to please rise. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Dear ones, as we go now from this time of worship, as we go forth proclaiming that the tomb is empty, Christ is arisen, and that there is no power death has over us. We go now with God's blessing. The God of all, who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Amen. We remain standing as we sing our sending hymn 376, Thine be the glory.
it's always hard to do yeah. it.